I hope everyone can see my screen. So welcome to this uh, live webinar. Uh, today in this uh, webinar, we will demonstrate the required steps in order to uh, perform machine learning using the software of uh, Beta CE. Uh, so we will uh, see the process that uh, will start uh, with ANZA, uh, where we will prepare the model using the optimization tool. Uh, to create uh, a DOE using the DOE algorithms that are available. And this DOE will be used as a data set uh, for our next step, which is the machine learning. This will take place in Convos. Uh, so we will do the training in Convos. We will see um, some uh, settings that they, we have there uh, concerning the training. And we will see then what uh, what is created and uh, how we can use it to make predictions uh, and achieve a, a faster uh, faster results, let's say faster predicted results. So uh, initially I will start with a few slides uh, that will uh, just showcase uh, what we are going to see. Slide. Uh, so, the process of uh, machine learning in the beta software um, was uh, achieved, let's say, by a number of additions in uh, the uh, in ANZA software and, of course, the DM, uh, which is used in order to uh, make this possible. Um, so, initially, there is a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, wizard to train the predictors from our DOE studies. When we create the DOE studies in ANZA, these are directly saved in the DM. So we can have access from Convos to that DM and perform the training. Uh, there is a simple interface to, to predict uh, results. We will see that. And uh, the predictors or machine learning models that we create, that we are calling them predictors, are of uh, two types. Uh, one is a combination of uh, simulation-driven algorithm, which is uh, feature-based, as we call it, that can give predictions for uh, first torsional, vertical, and lateral bending modes and local modes as well. And uh, the input of that predictor is the body in white. Um, and the other type of algorithm is the data-driven design variable-based algorithm that uh, can give predictions for um, uh, any results that uh, we want. And the input uh, is a parameterized uh, model that contains uh, design variables. Uh, so we will also see uh, how we we use Convos to inspect the uh, DOE and uh, compare the experiments, uh, check the their key values, um, and generally how we use uh, Convos as a front end to monitor uh, all the created experiments um, and make the uh, the correlations between them, between the results and between prediction predictions. Uh, but before all that, it is also uh, important to know that in order to perform any of these actions, uh, the ML Toolkit software is uh, required uh, for machine learning applications. And this goes for uh, machine learning applications that uh, um, are done in ANZA or in Convos. Uh, this requires a special uh, license feature, which can be ordered. And uh, it can be uh, the, the toolkit need to be installed. Uh, it can be an offline installation in a shared directory. And uh, it can be for both Linux and Windows and it's synchronized for both platforms. And it's also updated to uh, the latest uh, machine learning al algorithms that are available. Um, and it, also, it, possible, it is also possible to be reached through a script API to enable users to, to uh, create uh, plugins. Uh, so, uh, before we, we go to, to ANZA, we will see a few slides to, to see how the training is, is happening in Congo. Uh, so, 
in the interface of Commons that we will see later, there is a specific wizard to do the training where we select uh, our DOE studies, which of them are going to be used for training. Then, depending on what type of algorithm we uh, we choose, we can select what result files are going to be used uh, for this training, what we are going to, to use uh, for uh, our response, let's say, or, for our, or our results. We can choose among the uh, results that we can uh, identify, either from uh, key values, uh, 2D results, curves, or uh, 3D results, uh, scalar results or vector results, and uh, perform the, uh, the training. Okay, there is incremental training as well. Uh, we will talk about this. And uh, once the training is, is done, then the new uh, entity is created that is called predictor. And uh, through the predictor's reports, we can have some KPIs that can show us the behavior of this uh, predictor. So some of these charts show the target versus predictions uh, to give us an idea of how accurate the predictor is. Similarly, some scatter plots show us, shows us the difference between the predicted value and the real value or calculated value. Uh, the difference or the uh, accuracy of the predictions versus the target values. There is also the um, uh, accuracy versus data size, which is, we can, all, can also uh, call this a learning curve because it shows us how uh, much the accuracy is improved uh, uh, as uh, more data are being used for training. So we can see the error being decreased as more data uh, are uh, added for for training. Uh, we can also see the uh, uh, importance uh, ranking of design variables if we are doing a, a design variable based uh, machine learning. So we can see which of our design variables are more sensitive to the specific response or result that we are uh, training for, and we can make uh, some um, uh, decisions on that on on our next steps. And uh, finally, there is a variance estimation that is also um, predicting the uh, variance of our prediction within our confidence levels. So it can also give us an idea of how uh, well trained the model is. Some general information about the uh, predictors, the design variable uh, based algorithm is a data driven machine learning. Uh, uh, model uh, that can be used for, for training with key values, 2D plots and 3D plots, or so 3D simulation results. Um, the input for this uh, machine learning model are designed variables and their values, and of course the responses that we can extract from uh, the analysis. Um, this can, this, as I mentioned, can be single values, like key values, or 2D or 3D results. And uh, of course, if, as we train with this, uh, these types of results, these are the results that we can predict. So we can predict single scalar values, 2D plots in, in the charts, and also full field 3D results on the updated 3D model. Uh, this is an example of uh, how the interface for the prediction looks like. So we can see uh, that we have a parallel coordinate chart that shows us uh, our uh, design variables and the responses. And in this uh, field below, we can type our, our uh, we can type our new theoretical experiments, let's say, and uh, add this example for uh, uh, prediction. So once the, we make the prediction, I'm moving a little bit forward, we can see the results. And also we can see a new line in the in the interface, in the, in the graphical interface. The other green lines over here are the experiments that have been used to uh, train the predictor. In the same manner, we can use this interface to uh, get results for 2D or 3D results. So we can 
type in our experiment, select predict. And uh, once this is done, a new uh, prediction simulation run is created in a, in, a, in a specific tab. And the 2D and 3D predicted results are saved in a meta project. So we can open this uh, meta project. With, uh, we can see it in a meta viewer in, in, in the interface and get something like that, uh, where we have the 3D model with the stresses, the 2D uh, charts with the predicted results. And of course, we can also have the uh, animation of the displacements as well, so the predicted displacements as well. Um, we can do the prediction for uh, experiments that are also inside our uh, TM. So if we have experiments that uh, have not run through uh, solver analysis and we save them inside our DM, we can multiply select them and make the prediction for, for all of these by selecting the predict and uh, make the prediction for all of these. We will get the responses in, in the prediction window. Uh, it's also worthwhile to know that in, uh, in the latest uh, um, versions, um, the design variables that can be used for the design variable based uh, training can also uh, modify the geometry of the model. So we can have a, a different mesh throughout our training and learn from uh, different designs. And then we can predict for for uh, uh, different uh, mesh, let's say, uh, at the end, and get uh, 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 this this type of uh, results well, as uh, prediction. The other type of algorithm in uh, in Convos is the ML, uh, the uh, feature based learning, which is a cross model type of. Uh, approach it is not parametric so as an input it is not using the design variables but it is using the fe model uh, directly a, a specific uh, engineering feature extraction process takes place to make this possible and identify the model and correlate the model to the supported uh, responses which are uh, first torsional mode uh, frequency value the vertical and lateral bending uh, values and also some uh, local uh, values. Uh, so the prediction again is is done in a prediction window. What we get as a as a prediction is a, a single or a multiple single values for the first torsional mode, uh, mode frequency value. And to make the prediction, we just need to input or use a, a body in Y. And we can see the prediction. And uh, it's similar for the uh, lateral bending and uh, vertical bending, and similar for the local modes, depending on what we have in for the training. So I'm going through uh, faster with, with this to go through the live uh, demo. Uh, one important thing that uh, was uh, introduced in the latest versions of uh, Convos are the DOE studies uh, tab, where we can um, see our DOE study as it was created in ANZA and use the data frame and overview area to view the results, uh, filter them through the parallel plot or through the uh, data frame table and create charts to make comparison and generally to uh, post-process these uh, results. We will see a little bit of that as well. So I'm just uh, going through that. Um, another two other important bits are uh, the, uh, the ways to add data in, uh, in Convos that can be used for machine learning is to import data that had not been created in ANZA. So there are two there is a wizard that has two options to do that. One of them to import parametric data that uh, exists in, uh, in something like, like this. So a spreadsheet that we have with no model, but just values of design variables and responses. Uh, so this can be handled. Uh, we have an interface to assign what 
columns are design variables and what columns are responses. Uh, we can add pictures as well, or the file, the geometry file as well. And this will create the uh, DM structure that uh, we require. And for the uh, type of the feature-based machine learning, where we don't have design variables, again, we can have a, a text that looks like, like this, a text file or a CSV file, where we have the model, the FE model that is required, and the uh, values that we want to train for. So the predictor, the wizard will create this Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm missing a slide, but the the wizard will create this uh, TM structure and then we will be able to uh, perform the machine learning training. Uh, some important things that we will see as well are the machine learning uh, settings uh, that uh, we can modify to make our uh, training uh, customized, let's say. We will see that in the lab. So, uh, without uh, taking any much time for uh, uh, in this presentation, I will uh, close this one and uh, open Anza. So we will start our uh, demo with uh, a parametric model in NASA. Okay, so here I will uh, open one parametric model. By parametric, I mean it, uh, it has some uh, parameters. I will not go through that now because uh, it has been covered in a different webinar and I will, uh, I will uh, consider this a, a given, let's say. So here in this model we have four morphing parameters that modify the shape of this model and, and uh, this have been created using morphing and uh, I have also created an optimization task in here, you will see that I have my morphing parameters and also uh, some parameters that uh, modify the thickness of uh, specific parts of my model. So I have here a, a parameter that modifies the one pixel here of uh, the side member and one pixel of the, uh, we can see it in uh, highlight. These are the two areas that are modified by thickness. This can easily be done if, if we want to create such design variables, we can select design variables from entities and uh, uh, make a parameter of uh, any entity in our, uh, in our uh, database browser. Uh, so at this point, we have the design variables ready, we have the output file, we have a measurement response in our model which measures our mass, and we have defined a solver. Uh, so what I need to do now is I need to connect to a new DM. So I have to set a DM path. This is a new empty folder. I will use this as a DM path and switch this uh, action to saving DM. So what I will do from now on will be saved in the DM and then I will have access to it from the DM browser or combos. Uh, so now for uh, to continue, uh, I need to, of course, create some uh, post-processing to get my responses. Uh, to do that, I have to first have my uh, results. So what I will do is I will create a baseline run. Uh, this will apply my uh, um, initial values to, uh, to the model. So uh, for example, in, in morphing, Parameters it will not it will not morph it will just leave it at zero. Uh, for uh, thickness parameters it will just keep the value that it already uh, contains so the current value, and it will create a baseline of our model. So now the solver is running to solve this model. Uh, so once the process is done, I can go in the DM browser and check out what I have in 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 this uh, directory. 
in this DM browser. I have a new uh, default uh, simulation model uh, that contains uh, one simulation run. And the report here is uh, the mass, so the, the value that I have here. If I want to, post, to create a post-processing session now from, from here, I need to right click on my simulation run. I can do it from here or I can double click here to open the simulation runs list. You can see in the simulation run, I have the solver results and some information about the DOEP. With right click, I can go to post processing and record a session in meta. So now in, uh, in, this, uh, in this way, I will type a name for this session. Um, and I will read this geometry in this current meta, the geometry of my model. Okay. So now I'm switching to results. I have uh, the results here. Scalar one misses results in two subcases. Read the results. And now I have uh, my results in meta. So if I want to, I can uh, take a picture. So I will have the output in, uh, in the TM. Type a name and take a picture. My picture has been added in the DM. So the action of taking this picture will be also saved in the session. And if I want to capture some key values here, I have to create some uh, variables. And I can do that through the uh, variables list. For example, I can name. And through the built-in function, I can create a new uh, variable. I will select the maximum uh, stress for my model. Okay, select the result. Okay. So with this uh, function here, I'm, I have created a variable that uh, reads the maximum stress for this uh, subcase for this model. Okay, this is uh, a demo, so this is fine for, for now. Uh, I'm finished with what I want to have from this session. And I go in the DM browser of Meta and uh, select Stop Recording Session. So now uh, the session has been done, is added under my uh, simulation run. And I also have the reports here, the image and the uh, key value. One is the previous one, the mass, and then the maximum stress key value. Uh, if I want to edit this uh, session, I can open it. As you can see, this uh, the geometry file and the results files are, are uh, saved with variables so that they can be used for every uh, experiment. So for now, I will save this uh, session file somewhere that I can find it easily in, let's say, in uh, let's, let's save it here with this name. And I'm closing now Meta because I have no use for this. Okay. And if I refresh my list here in uh, the DM browser of Anza, I can see that I have for this model the reports that are uh, the key value that I can see again here in with uh, the uh, viewer. This is the key value and also the image. This is the image I took. Okay, so now I can go to my uh, task and create a new post processing item that will require. Of course, the meta commands and a session file. I can select the session that I just created. This was this one. And as an output directory, I will pick uh, the TM. Okay, so now I have everything uh, ready for my uh, uh, DOE. 
I have a solver, I have a post processing that uh, will create my, my results. So I can go and in the next tab, generate as many experiments as I want in this table and uh, press start with save in DM active. So when I press start now, because I'm going to save in DM, I have a specific wizard here that will guide me towards uh, creating this DOE and saving it in uh, the DM. Uh, the signature page here is uh, some naming uh, that we need to give to specific uh, properties and attributes of our model in order to be able to filter and keep versioning and all of these, uh, these things that the DM is offering. Um, if I have already something in the DM, I can also select it. So collect the signature, let's say, or the naming that we already have uh, existing. So then I can continue uh, in this, this checks if my workflow, my optimization task is correct or if I have any problems. Now it is correct because I have already run the baseline run. It, it works. I have the responses here to let me know that it works. Uh, in the next two pages, I'm seeing the conflicts between simulation models that may exist in the DM and also simulation runs that may exist in the DM. Um, if I press finish now, it will start creating the, the DOE and this DOE will appear uh, inside the DM. I will not do it now because it will take time. Uh, but uh, we can see how this works now in uh, Convos with a similar existing uh, DOE and what we need to do uh, from, from now. So in Convos, the first thing that I need to do is to connect to this DM that I, ha I have already uh, create, uh, used here in, uh, in ANZA. Uh, if my back to show you this one that already has data, if I already have uh, data in my DM, in my simulation uh, runs list, I should have uh, some experiments. This is the DOE iteration, and then these are the experiments from that DOE. So in this case, I have uh, created uh, 25 experiments for, for this uh, model. So if I go to see these in Convos, I can check here my simulation models. This is in a specific view, it is called the NLE view. And if I expand, I can see this is my simulation model. And underneath the DOE setups, I see the name of my optimization task, my experiments. I have many experiments, multiple DOE here, uh, two, four, and uh, five, so multiple studies. And uh, I also have the initial state run, which is the initial state of my model. Each experiment contains the reports that I need, some images. It could be videos, curves, um, presentations, or whatever we want to have during the post-processing of our model. And of course, the key values, which are used for uh, training the machine learning algorithm. I can also check out uh, how the model looks like. So I can see it in viewer inside Convos. And I can also compare it with uh, other experiments here and uh, generally have uh, an idea of how the model looks like. So when I click uh, to another uh, run, I can see that my model is updated. So I can identify the different shapes of this model. If I press control and uh, do something like that, I can make a direct comparison between uh, the two models. And this is the same with their uh, uh, results as well, with their reports so or key values. If I want to see one key value and compare it with the key value of another model, I can do this again with, uh, with ease, like that, and make comparison. So, now that we have our data set created, we can proceed to creating uh, a machine learning model. Uh, one way to do it, if there are no other models in uh, machine learning models in, in, our, in my DM, I can select the experiments I want and press train a new predictor. Uh, sp specify the type of algorithm, which is DV based in this case. 
and then I'm go I'm going to the wizard uh, for the training. The other way, if I already have some predictors, is to select the predictors from my VM. So I already have some here, and press the train button. Again, this will uh, ask me to select the type, pick the TOE study uh, that uh, I want. One of the, I have three in here, so I select one of them. This contains the 20 experiments or 25 experiments. Um, the next step is uh, to select the result files. So if I want to uh, train my algorithms for uh, the maximum or the stresses of our model or uh, for Mrs. Stresses, plastic strain, I can select the main result in, in Astran files, this is the OP2. And for care results, I can select the uh, respective file. This is a punch file if I have it, or bin out file if I have a crash analysis, etc. So at this step, uh, Meta is running and identifying what are these responses for from this file. So uh, in the next step, I can select the available responses. So I have uh, my key values, which are created from my session file. Um, and then from the response files, I can pick uh, curves uh, the, and also the field results, the displacements and uh, stresses uh, over here. I can do uh, as many as I want at once and then give a name and confirm and this will start uh, the training. I will not do it now because it could take uh, some time. But once the training is uh, completed, I will have a, a predictor here, a group of predictors if I have more than one responses. Each of these predictors contains these reports that I mentioned earlier. So I can see that uh, I have an importance <coughs> map of my design variables for this response, which is mass. Um, the uh, accuracy charts uh, and the variance estimation and all of these uh, reports. And of course, as key values, I have the estimated uh, test mean absolute error and the train mean absolute error. Uh, so now what I can do with this predictor is I can select the predictor and press group predict. Um, this will uh, open the prediction window and I can type in here um, design variable values that I want to make a prediction for. <clears throat> so here I see all the experiments that are uh, have been used for, for the training of this predictor. I can type here some new values. Select predict, and this will uh, start making a prediction for uh, these three uh, key values that I, I have trained this predictor for. In a similar manner, we can make a prediction for the 3D result and create uh, a meta project that will contain the 3D results and uh, the responses. So the prediction for these three um, responses may take uh, a few seconds for uh, for this laptop that I'm running in, and the uh, prediction for the three results may take uh, a few a couple of minutes for for this machine. So for for these uh, key values it should be okay uh, for our time. For the three D responses, I will just show you uh, one that is already available. Let's give it a couple of minutes.
Uh, while this is running, it's on, on, on to the final prediction now. I will open a, another model that I want to uh, discuss about, which is the, um, the models for the feature based. Uh, that uh, can be uh, created from uh, from Anza. Uh, it's, it's working. Uh, so I mentioned for the feature-based <clears throat> type of algorithm that uh, it is using the FE model and uh, as responses it can uh, collect the first torsional uh, mode frequency value, the first uh, vertical and lateral bending values and also local modes. So of course these, uh, these values can be uh, labeled manually usually this is what uh, what happens so we have our models and we label uh, these modes uh, specifically in anza if if this uh, this process is done in the optimization task we have a specific uh, wizard uh, that is performing this uh, this job so in in this case we have a lot of design variables that are modifying our model in order to make multiple variations of our models for our data set. Uh, and we have a, uh, a specific wizard uh, created for this uh, work uh, that uh, requires a few um, points in our model. Second, find my VM path. Okay. So for for this model, we we have uh, multiple design variables, as I mentioned, uh, that modify the shape in order to create variations. And uh, this uh, this wizard that can be it is available, and you can uh, can uh, create it through here one for the elastic modes and one for local modes, uh, will um, will guide uh, will guide you through selecting specific points, uh, four points or six points, depending on uh, the case, that uh, will be uh, used through uh, a, a, a response, a meta session that will identify the response that uh, we need for the first torsional mode and the vertical uh, modes as well. So I'm picking six points as they are uh, depicted here. These points are uh, then uh, named according to position, so front uh, left hand side, middle left hand side, etc. And uh, then what happens is when I do that, a post-processing session is uh, is created automatically. Uh, that uh, post-processing item is created automatically. That contains a specific session that comes within uh, our uh, package that will be able to identify these uh, values for each of our experiments. And uh, we will see what happens next. So. I'm going back to, to this case, uh, just to show you the results here. So we can see we have the response, the prediction for these responses. This is the curve of these responses, so I can filter and uh, 
check how it looks against the other. And if I'm going to, to have a prediction from the 3D uh, predictor, again, I will have the same interface to make the prediction. But as a result, when, I, when the prediction is, is done, I will get a prediction type of uh, run, simulation run, that will hold a meta project with the 3D displacements prediction. So if I open this in, in, uh, in the viewer, I can see here are the predicted results. Okay. So this is a prediction of my theoretical model. This can be done, of course, in a, in another analysis. For example, a um, if it, if it is a crash analysis, which I have here. See this model. So this is a, uh, a model of uh, two rails that uh, crash in a barrier. I have my experiments here that I can I can see the, the pictures of the crash and uh, curves also that I have uh, created. And of course, the key values for this model. And if I go to the predictors, that I have trained, I have trained for uh, 2D and 3D results, for example, that these displacements, uh, kinetic energy, total principal stresses, and total energy. This is one predictor that I have trained. If I go and make a prediction for that, uh, I will get Uh, a prediction run that would look like uh, like this. It will contain key values if, if it has been trained to uh, key values, and it will also contain uh, 3D model. If I have uh, added the displacements in my training, I will also have the animation for the displacements as well. Okay, so these are the predicted results for this uh, this model. Okay, so for the DV based, this is the uh, uh, the process to create a data set, perform the training and uh, perform predictions and uh, see the results. These are the, this is the potential now. Uh, if we go to the, um, the DM that I was showing uh, earlier for, with this model that is built for the feature-based, uh, we will see the, let's see here the simulation models. Okay, so this is my model. I would like to give you the extent of these design variables. So we can see that there are huge changes in the in the shape and of course the thickness of some panels. There are several variables that modify this model. And this has been done in order to create a data set with a large variation of uh, models. Since we have one model, uh, this is a way to, to create multiple variations of it. Uh, we could have multiple different models in, in our data set. And what it is required is just the model and the, uh, the key value responses. So this, uh, this value. Again, as we did before, we can go to, uh, to the training, select feature-based, pick the uh, DOE study that we have available, select the values that we want to train for, set up a name, 
and confirm and it will start the training. Once it finishes, it will, it will create a group of uh, predictors. Again, each predictor will have its, its reports regarding uh, accuracy. So we can, uh, we can check and uh, decide if this, this looks okay for, for uh, as, as a predictor with a good accuracy. And then what we can do is we can uh, uh, we can make predictions for these values for uh, different models that we can import here. So we can import a model from uh, from our file system if if the model is not in the database, or for example, in this case we can we can have an, an, a different simulation model in our database and uh, select the experiments and uh, make a prediction. Let's try this and see if it will take a lot of time. So, elastic noise. So now it will start uh, the prediction and uh, we will see the results, the values uh, in here in a few minutes. Uh, so that this uh, latest uh, type of uh, algorithm that I mentioned, the feature-based, I mentioned in the beginning, it is not using the design variables, but it is a um, more generalized type of uh, algorithm that it, it trains on uh, the actual body in white. There is a process that runs in the background. It identifies specific features of the model. And this is how uh, the training is done. These features are correlated then to the responses. And this is how these, um, uh, the training uh, is, uh, is uh, happening. So now I have these results. So these are the uh, lateral bending mode frequency value for these uh, three models with the variance of the prediction and the same for the other uh, two responses. It does not uh, predict the uh, displacement, so I cannot have a picture at the moment. I just have these uh, key values. If I have multiple models that I want to import to my um, my DM and I don't have the ANSA model, uh, I can do it with a different way. Uh, I have to connect to a new uh, empty DM. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, I'm connecting to an empty DM, and uh, the, the um, import action that I mentioned earlier. Uh, these are happening through here, the import DOE, study, or parametric data. If I import the DOE study, I have to select the, uh, a text file or a CSV file that I mentioned. It should look something like this. I have the path to my model because I need the FE model for this type of training. And with comma, sep, comma, uh, the values that I want to train for. So what will happen now if I select this file? Uh, I can name my variables. First one, first torsional value. The second is the test value. I can give a name to my simulation model. Or I can use um, ANSA details, ANSA meta details, if uh, if I want to, if I have the ANSA file, if I don't, I just uh, continue like that. So this process runs, it creates the, the structure that is needed inside uh, the DM, uh, so that we can then go and perform the feature-based uh, machine learning training, which requires the model and the values. Uh, similarly, the other option here in the actions was the import parametric data, which requires the, the CSV file, the, the CSV or, or Excel type of file, a spreadsheet, 
uh, which contains also the design variables uh, and the responses if we want to perform the design variable based uh, training. So in a couple of minutes, this will finish. Okay. Once this finishes, delete all this, not important. I have new uh, simulation models and new simulation runs. Here are my experiments. If I check the reports, I should have the two values, the first torsional and the test value. And if I check the details for this one, I should have in the file the name of the file that I I had in the text file. So this file is copied inside the DM, so it can be used for a training. Uh, so I can uh, I can go from here, select my experiments, and uh, select the training new predictor feature based. Select the two values. Give a name. Some comments if I want to press next and uh, start the train. Uh, there's also the incremental learning option, which I mentioned in my presentation uh, in the last of the uh, meeting uh, last week. The incremental learning will allow this predictor to be uh, re uh, to be updated with new data. In and this update, this new uh, data training will be much faster since it will not. Uh, use the old data to retrain them from scratch, but it will contain the information and will start having already the data that are available. Uh, so training of this will take some time because it performs the feature extraction for each model, uh, but at the end it will create a predictor like I think one Available. Let's see if I get it. this one. Okay, so it will create a predictor that would look like that with uh, the first torsional value and the bending mode value. I can go and uh, select predict to make uh, a prediction. Also, I mentioned DOE studies in my presentation today. Uh, every time I create a DOE study from ANSA or I import a DOE study with uh, this type of way, I have um, uh, I have uh, the DOE studies available here. In this case, I don't have design variables, so it just shows me the experiments and the responses. But if I go to another DM, with design variables that contains more information, I can see that I I can have uh, the data frame table, which I can in which I can see all of my responses and uh, design variable values. I have the parallel coordinate chart where I can filter some of the, of the experiments that I'm interested in. When I filter these experiments, I'll filter in the data frame table and And also any charts that I have, which I can create from from here, so I can uh, make a post processing of my DOE study and uh, make a design exploration uh, this way with uh, creating uh, different types of uh, charts through and histograms uh, through through here. Uh, I think this is the time uh, that uh, we have for today. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, type them in and uh, I will respond.